This is the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and this is episode 58, how keyword research can quickly validate your business idea. Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs. This is Ash, and on the show today, I've got a really cool guy named Ewan Fenzer. Tell you a little bit about you and I met him at the Rhodium Weekend Conference. This is if you keep up with the show, you'll know that I went to this really awesome conference for digital entrepreneurs in Las Vegas uh, just a couple weeks ago, and Ewan was one of the speakers. And what caught my attention with his presentation is that he really concentrated on keyword research and the importance of keyword research before you ever start building your online business. The idea behind this is you wanna go out, see what people are searching for, see how much competition exists where that need isn't being met, then create a business around that. And that's exactly what Ewan does. He manages a portfolio of 25 different websites and several of them cash flowing over $5,000 per month. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to learn in this episode why keyword research should be done before building an online business. Should you try and cheat the Google algorithm to get your site listed higher faster? How to leverage Amazon using their affiliate platform and the mindset of moving from a solopreneur or basically working by yourself, wearing every hat to managing and delegating tasks to a staff. So I hope you enjoy this episode. It was a lot of fun for me. This is where I'm putting my energy and focus. I want to become a better digital entrepreneur and I want to help you do the same. So send me your feedback, keep up with us on Twitter and Facebook, and I hope you enjoy the show. Before we get started, I want to remind you that Exodus.io is looking to hire a JavaScript developer for a work from home position. They are building a multi-cryptocurrency desktop wallet, which has a beautiful interface. It's a really nice looking application, but they need some help. So if you are an experienced JavaScript developer, if you're interested in blockchain technology and consider yourself a Liberty entrepreneur, then shoot them a line at founders at exodus.io. Again, that's E-X-O-D-U-S dot I-O. Tell them that Ash from Liberty Entrepreneur sent you. With me on the show today is Ewan Finzer. He is a digital entrepreneur who builds and manages a portfolio of cash flowing online companies. Ewan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ash. I appreciate uh, being on. It's a great privilege. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're passionate about. Yeah, so uh, what I'm passionate about is building digital assets. And basically what we're doing right now is we're building primarily content-based websites uh, that leverage Google traffic and other traffic sources to earn passive income as a portfolio. So we have over 20 sites that we're operating right now um, in a variety of different verticals. And we've just been focused on growing them and doubling down on what's working. Yeah. So I met you and at the Rhodium weekend conference in Las Vegas, I think it was like last week or the week before, uh, today is October the 26th. And you did a presentation where you were talking about keyword research and just the importance of keyword research and SEO as it pertains to building online businesses. Could you go into that just a little bit? And why is SEO one of the first things you do rather than one of the last things you do after you get your business built? Yeah. So uh, the way I approach keyword research is really as a form of market validation. Um, basically what you're doing is, is you're, you're finding out if there's a market up front. Um, you're doing all the, the due diligence, you're looking at the data and you're really figuring out if, you know, if you see some smoke, there's probably a fire, but you know, uh, traditionally, a lot of people look at business the opposite way and they, they have an idea and they kind of go out there and they run with it. And entrepreneurship is seen as this incredibly risky proposition. But, you know, by focusing on the data, you know, what people are searching for, you can find the high intent terms that demonstrate that people are looking for an answer to a particular problem and just approach it from that angle as opposed to, to any other angle, which I think is really the... Uh, 
the whole you know the whole point of business is you want to solve people's problems. Right. So right now in 2016, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to create a Beanie Baby website. You're going to find that not a lot of people are looking to trade Beanie Babies anymore. Is that kind of on the? That's correct, and it's it's you know it's a quick way to get uh, really quick feedback about your market, so you can have all these assumptions or all these ideas about what would be you know a good business or you know a good market to go after. But until you actually get that data that that actually proves that people are looking for it, um, you, you know you could be you could be right, you could be wrong. But it's <laughs> again, it's a very risky proposition. So I've kind of tried to take that as much of that risk away as possible and really enter markets that are wide open, blue sky, where basically users queries or uh, user intent is, is not being answered correctly and, and just kind of filling the knowledge gap there. And, uh, you know, we help, we help uh, consumers make better purchasing decisions. So that's ultimately the goal. So if we can enter, uh, you know, get, get in between those users and th what they're looking for and help them make a better decision, that's, that's our goal. Yeah, and that's definitely an entrepreneurial mindset there. You and you know, trying to find where people need help and providing that help and assistance to them. Can you get a little bit more detail? Like, what what type of help are you giving uh, users, and and how are you directing them, and and how does that end up making a profit for you? Right. So, essentially, what we're doing. I mean, there's a whole world of affiliate marketing, and uh, you know, it's actually surprising how how few people in the general public actually know how that works. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're partnering with some of the bigger brands in particular for us, we're leveraging Amazon. Uh, they, you know, have a, a wonderful, uh, e-commerce platform. They've obviously are a huge player in the space and we're kind of attaching ourselves to their coattails, um, and, you know, sending our users over to them when they're ready to make a purchasing decision. Uh, but the key, the key value add that we're giving is, uh, you know, let's say someone's looking for you know, what is the best uh, running headphones? Um, if someone's looking, you know, to buy a new pair of headphones, that might be a term that they're searching for. And essentially, we'll provide content that helps them make that decision. And when they're ready, you know, whether that's halfway through the content or at the end of the content, uh, they, uh, they might click a link that we have uh, that goes through to uh, Amazon. And essentially, we get a commission from from those sales and actually from anything else they buy on Amazon. So they could do their Christmas shopping, which is uh, exciting uh, given the timing right now, you know, upcoming uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's huge for our, our line of work. Um, and essentially that's what we do. We provide high quality content, whether that's uh, video, whether that's um, guides, tables, uh, you name it, uh, firsthand images. We really try to, to go above and beyond when it comes to content and really help make uh, make the purchasing decision uh, something something that our users are really comfortable with, and it's not we're not doing any hard selling. We're really just providing that value up front. Yeah. So I know during your presentation at the Rhodium Weekend Conference was about running shoes, and let, let's just say because when you're an affiliate, it really doesn't matter what you're selling as long as you're finding your opportunity in the marketplace. You validate that through the keyword research and see what people are searching for and what trends are available. But you also need to learn which keywords to focus in on. And in your presentation, you use the example running shoes, which has a lot of competition. I mean, as anyone can imagine, mm -hmm. there are a lot of different types of running shoes and sizes and colors and purposes and manufacturers all over the world for running shoes. Why, why would someone not want to target running shoe? And what other types of keywords could they perhaps target? Right. So just the term, let's just say running shoes, that's a very vague term. Someone could be searching that, uh, you know, because they're looking to, uh, you know, make a purchase. Maybe they're just looking for information. Maybe they're looking for images. Maybe uh, maybe they're thinking about buying very early on in the process. Maybe they're, you know, six months down the road. We try to focus on those terms that have modifiers in front of them that basically, you know, what we call high intent keywords where we kind of have a good idea up front about what the user is intending to do. Um, so an example would be, a better example would be best running shoes, okay? So that kind of modifies running shoes, and it tells us that this person is pretty far along in their decision-making process. Uh, if you think about the funnel, they're further down. They they uh, you know, might have their wallet out on the table. Uh, maybe their credit card's not out, but they're definitely uh, you know in the mood to buy. 
um, and we're providing that last mile uh, research, if you will, that gets them there. And then, you know, what we did, what I did at Rhodium was really break it down to even more levels. It's no secret in, in our space that you want to target those best t style articles. Uh, but what a lot of people miss is the long, the longer tail variations off of that. Um, so the method that I demonstrated, you know, for everyone, for the audience there was uh, basically resulted in finding all these other keywords. For example, you know, best running shoes for supination, for overpronation, uh, all these little terms that you wouldn't really think of if you're kind of approaching running from a high, high level uh, as a niche. Um, so that's really kind of where the magic happens, uh, where we can target those uh, super specific keywords that are also buying intent, where we know basically who, who our customer avatar is. Uh, you know, even better would be, you know, best running shoes, uh, for best women's running shoes for supination, you know, really targeting down, niching down so that when we create content, we're, we know who exactly who we're talking to and, you know, our conversion rates are higher and um, our users are happier because we're, we're targeting them and it's kind of a win-win. And of course, Amazon's happier because we're sending targeted traffic to them. Right. Yeah. So like, I, I remember one of your examples was best running shoes for bad knees, men over 60 years old. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a very specific type of keyword that someone's searching. And if they're searching for that and you're able to rank, they probably do have their credit card in their hand. Yeah, no, they, and they've they've basically pre-qualified themselves, and that's where I get back to the market validation piece. I mean, if if you can if you can speak to that person specifically, uh, you know, you've kind of you've already you've already demonstrated that there's you know market potential. You you can win with those keywords. So take us back to the early days and the genesis of you creating these digital assets. I know that you were working at a desk job and then you wanted to start creating the, you want to become a digital entrepreneur. What was that like? What was your mindset then? And why did you make that change? Yes, yeah, so this is, this is one of my, yeah, my favorite stories, you know, talking about it. Cause I think it resonates with, um, you know, with, with so many people right now, especially given the mac macroeconomic climate, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, at least in the U.S., you know, stagnating middle class and things like that. And um, th it's very hard to find those narratives for success. And for me, really, uh, you know, I I haven't had a long career in corporate America. You know, I, I was out of college maybe two years uh, working uh, a desk job. And for me, I figured out very quickly that it just wasn't for me, you know. And what's funny is, you know, for, for centuries, people have had the same feeling, but there's nothing they could do about it. And it's only now in this digital age that there are concrete steps that you can take um, uh, right now, like today, to just start taking action towards that goal of leaving the job behind. And so for me, it was really this idea of escaping the cubicle. Um, and this this is not meant to knock you know the people that enjoy that that life that kind of lifestyle, but for me it was just I'd rather be working on building my own my own dream rather than building someone else's dream, mm -hmm. and um, you know I and I kind of looked around and I said okay well what does it look like 20 years from now do I see myself here, and you know would that be something that I'm proud of would that be something that you know, is meaningful. And yeah, sure, I, I probably could have made a little bit more money. And gradually, you know, it would be a very safe kind of route. But, um, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't feel free, you know, I didn't feel, uh, you know, like I had uh, control over my life. And that's really what I was looking for. Um, so what I started to do is, you know, little things like after work, uh, I live in New Jersey, so there's terrible traffic, um, you know, concrete parking lots all the way home. So, uh, what I would do is I would stop at a, you know, a Starbucks or a Panera Bread and, you know, from, you know, maybe from 6 to 8.30 uh, at night, I'd, instead of sitting in traffic, I'd be working on my websites. And so, you know, I had actually gained some knowledge uh, of this while I was in college, just kind of doing it for beer money. You know, I'd, I'd kind of picked it up, uh, you know, who, who knows how you really pick things up like this. I think I had heard something or... Uh, I think I'd actually sold something on Amazon, like, like books. I think I'd been selling my my college books back to Amazon, and that's kind of my what was my my first taste of online income. Uh, but then, you know, I just got more interested in, you know, oh, this is kind of cool. Like I can I can send 
I can ship things to people and I can get paid via Amazon. I can arbitrage. And then from there, I just got interested in sites. I, I noticed they had an affiliate program as well. You Not only could you sell your books back to Amazon, they also had this affiliate program. And that's kind of how I started getting get it, getting interested in the space. And from there, uh, you know, I just started with really small sites. Um, and uh, this was back, you know, doing everything myself, you know, he, from all the content, all the research and, you know, a lot of failures along the way to start. Uh, but really the turning point was when I was in that day job and saying, okay, I've arrived, I'm an adult. Uh, and, you know, I, this isn't, something's not right. And that's really the, the, was the impetus for me to take it to the next level and just start using every free minute. Uh, you know, my wife is very supportive and she would encourage me. She says, why don't you stop tonight and get some work done? And, um, you know, she was very supportive of it. So I think it's important to have supporting uh, team members in your court, but that for me, you know, it was, it was trying to get out of the cubicle, looking at that roadmap stretching out in front of you for your life. You know, that, that course that seems like it's already plotted itself and saying, Hey, no, I want to take some control. I want to create something that, of meaning and something that I can grow exponentially that isn't capped that, uh, you know, will can, you know, today we, we think of ourselves as a media company. We don't just build sites, you know, so that's kind of been the, the migration from the desk job to where we are today. Yeah. What was it like when you did wear every hat, you know, you were a one man operation for a long time and you had to wear every hat. And as an entrepreneur, this is something that we have to do very early on. When I, whenever I was helping build your Pacific bank, I had to wear a lot of hats, a compliance hat, a sales hat, an account opening hat, a marketing hat. It sounds like you had to do the same thing, which is not uncommon. What was it like for you to start taking off those hats and start hiring and delegating staff to do that and like building that trust and actually building a real company? Sorry for the interruption and I promise it's going to be quick. The team over at Exodus.io is still looking to hire a JavaScript developer for a work from home position. If you're familiar and an experienced JavaScript developer, you like the idea of working in the very fast paced cryptocurrency world and you consider yourself to be a Liberty entrepreneur, then send them an email at founders at exodus.io. That's E X O D U S dot I O and let them know that Ash from Liberty entrepreneurs sent you. All right, let's get back to the show. What was it like for you to start taking off those hats and start hiring and delegating staff to do that and like building that trust and actually building a real company? It, it's funny because it's a whole different skill set. Um, you know, there, there are many people that are very good at being solo entre entrepreneurs and they can, uh, you know, they can do everything themselves. They're jack of all trades. You have to learn, you know, very quickly what you are good at and what you're not good at and outsource the stuff you're not good at and start there. And to me, that, that transformation from being a, a solo operator to actually bringing people into the company has been, you know, incredibly transformative. It's been a different skill set to learn of uh, creating systems, creating processes, um, making sure that everyone's on the same page, uh, hiring the right people, uh, very different skill set, but it's been instrumental to the growth. At a certain point, for me, looking at my portfolio, when you got beyond five sites that you were personally working on, it just became unwieldy. You know, there was no way that you could manage, you know, I could manage 20 sites on my own, or let alone, you know, 30 sites. So really it's about building that infrastructure that can support you, uh, you know, so I can take time off. I can, you know, I can, I can do things. I can focus on the high level business priorities. And I know that there's a system behind me that's working and I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. You, what skill set do you think is most valuable or even possibly necessary to be a, a good digital entrepreneur? Uh, resilience. <laughs> you, you have to be able to, to, to get hit, get knocked down and just keep getting back up. Uh, the nice thing about the digital space is it's relative to other business models. Um, it's, it's fairly, uh, it's fairly kind when it comes to how hard it's going to hit you. I mean, worst case scenario, you lose a site or, you lose a, you lose a website, but then, but then you can go back and you can, you can start again. And it's really about building the, those skill sets. Um, for me, that's been the key, you know, building the skills so that, it, you know, if the business was wiped out overnight, 
um, I still have the core competency that I can, you know, I could start again from, from day one. Um, and I, you know, th that's really the value is, is the knowledge. It's not so much that, oh, I have this asset that's worth, worth X. It's that I have now the tools where I know I never have to work a day job again, you know, even if everything went to zero tomorrow. Um, so I think, yeah, I think resilience is, is the key is just being able to deal with the punches and, and keep the long, long view and not get caught up in short term tactics that, you know, like off page SEO or black hat F SEO or might seem enticing in the short term. But in the long run, you want to, you know, aim high and just just continue to hammer away and be persistent. And, and when did you really struggle with this resilience and when did you get knocked down and you had to turn around and just remember your own words here well there was actually a time period after i i graduated from college and when i was i had a few sites and it was back in the day when you could do a lot of things in google to manipulate your rankings there it's called black hat seo and basically it involves what i like to call alchemy which is basically something that doesn't have any intrinsic value but it kind of works now because of the system we're in um, but, you know, at the time there was this, this update that rolled around and good old Google, they're always coming around with updates. And because I was using some of these methods, my little portfolio wasn't earning a whole lot, but it was wiped out. And it was at the same time that I was trying to transitioning into the workforce. So I think that combined those two things kind of basically said, okay, now it's time to grow up. You know, it's time to leave these, this behind. And that was really where I was, I, I was knocked out. And, and to be honest, for probably six months to a year, I was out, you know, I, I wasn't doing much, you know, I still had some domains, but I really wasn't focused on that. Um, but then, I, you know, in the back of my head, I still, I still kept that fire burning. You know, I, I, I still knew I had to get back to that at some point. And, you know, that was a perfect example of, then I just came back stronger, you know, and, and we just doubled down. And I actually strategically from that, from that point, I made the decision that, you know, we're not going to build sites based off of short term tactics. We're going to build sites that are high quality content that uh, adhere to Google's terms of service and ultimately deliver uh, an excellent user experience. And, you know, maybe that ROI is a few years longer than if I had, you know, some tactics up my sleeve, but that has paid dividends in terms of my progress. You know, now when we get Google updates rolling around, our sites go up in the rankings and everyone else is crying about the, the sky falling. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, the res resilience there has been, has, was so key to my development and just being confronted with that obstacle and then just moving, moving past it. And, you know, you, you do get knocked back and it's easy to say resilience, but I think my example kind of demonstrates, you know, I was out, you know, for a little while, I, I was knocked to the sidelines, but I still had that fire that, you know, told me, Hey, you gotta, eventually you're going to have to get back in. And, and, you know, that really was, you know, such an important moment for me to deal with that first failure. So I was so impressed whenever you were going over, I'm coming back to the conference and your presentation. And I know that you nor I have any affiliation with this company, SE Cockpit. Mm -hmm. uh, but could you tell us what is SE Cockpit? How is it different than Google Keyword Planner? And just how much time or how much attention should a, a digital entrepreneur or someone who's interested in becoming a digital entrepreneur pay attention to tools like these? Yeah, so there are a lot of tools out there. There are a lot of shiny objects. And, you know, I would definitely recommend going the lean startup route and not spending money on things you don't have to. But for keyword research tools, this, for me, has been the most important tool. It's a tool I use every single day. I have it open on my desktop. And in terms of the difference between the Google Keyword Planner, a lot of people use that. And it gives you some basic data, but it really doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't allow you to do certain manipulations of phrases. It doesn't allow you to look at the competitiveness score in a real granular level. And to me, that's really the advantage. It's going, it's finding those holes in the market and being able to, uh, you know, to to jump on them. As, you know, as opposed to looking at the Google Keyword Planner, getting some general data. I mean, that that tool is really built for advertisers more so than for publishers. So. Uh, this keyword tool is really a core part of our business and it's something that, you know, I think is, if you're going to make an investment, I, I think it's well worth, well worth the money. What advice could you share with my audience to help them become a better digital entrepreneur faster? Yeah. So 
one thing it's been said other places but i i take this to heart is to first to be able to fail quickly um and that's the, the nice thing about the online space it's pretty forgiving when it comes to failure and you can pick yourself up you can register a new domain um but that's that's the key you know it's it's not don't hang on to your dogs you know too long you know make sure you're you're you know you're recognizing and you're honing your craft and you're definitely focusing on your winners and and for me once you find that system that works that that path that works that model that works just double down on that and continue to to leverage that for me for example our our portfolio for the longest time had would was primarily focused on just providing high quality content um google search traffic and monetized via the amazon affiliate program and that's all it was you know it just it, we found something that worked we didn't think about oh there's drop shipping there's there's e-commerce stores, there's Google AdSense, there's a whole host of different ways to make money online. And the problem with the space is there's so many distractions. Um, literally every every day there's another model, there's, there's, this is the hot new thing, Amazon FBA. There's so many things that could have distracted me along the way. So I think it's really about picking something and going and just going for it. If it doesn't work, then then shift to something else. But the worst, the worst thing I'm seeing right now in, in the marketplace with, you know, other entrepreneurs is the shiny object syndrome and, and just jumping from thing to thing and uh, never really getting any traction. And then at that point, giving up and saying, oh, this whole online thing doesn't work. And so my biggest advice would be just to stick to one model, find out if it works. If it doesn't work, move on, but really give it the chance to succeed and double down on that if it does work. And don't worry about diversification until you have something worth diversifying. Yeah, it sounds like you need to create a course about all this. You and have you thought about that? <laughs> I, I have. So, uh, in the response to the uh, to the Rodium event, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me. You know, very curious about this this uh, this model, and you know, it's something I'm thinking about. I'm definitely pursuing that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to put a little bit more of a public face. I and mean, for years. I was just doing this by myself, you know, on my own, um, with my own team and kind of in my own silo. Um, but now I think I'm transitioning more to kind of wanting to spread the gospel in, in kind of a, a bigger way. And I just think that, you know, I've mentioned this before, but at this point in time, it's only at this point in, in our history where the tools of entrepreneurship have been democratized. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not about who you are, where you come from. You know, are your parents rich? You know, what, what your background is. You can, uh, with very little upfront cost, create something of value. You know, we've literally created assets out of nothing uh, that are now worth you know hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, just you know just by just by going online and and finding a model that works. And it's not going to be like this forever. And that's really what I'm kind of most interested in doing right now is really helping people. You know the steel worker in Michigan, you know, that is unemployed, you know, basically our, our, our politicians are saying, you know, that's, uh, we're going to fix that. And, and to me, the answer is entrepreneurship. The answer is the digital space. You know, there's just so much opportunity um, out there. It just people need to take action. And I would love to be the person that helps connect people looking for, for this answer um, and, and helping them build their, their online businesses. Cause I think it has a truly, uh, liberating impact. Yeah, it's uh, it's very beautiful, and especially in the digital space, there's a lot less regulation than in the physical world. So you know the government interventions and all this needless regulation that has brought our steel industry and our coal industries down from their peaks. It's just not applied in the digital world. You know, Moore's law is still holding true in the digital world. We, we still run at the speed of the internet, and it is like you said, it's a fast growing and moving space it has a very low barrier to entry you can do it in your free time as a hobby to get your feet wet and really start learning this stuff and then start looking at other business models online look look at the content site the authority site look at affiliate sites look at community driven or subscription or premium sites you know look at e-commerce sites there's a whole world out there i i've had my eyes open so big ever since I went and came back from the Rhodium Weekend Conference because there are so many amazing digital entrepreneurs doing so many things. And at the end of the day, we're trying to get traffic. 
and how we're, and why we're trying to get traffic is because we're trying to serve a need on the internet that's currently not being served as well as we think we can do it. You and I think it's wonderful. I'm obsessed with this digital entrepreneurship thing now. As you can tell, I have switched and transitioned my focus since the Rhodium Weekend Conference to digital entrepreneurship because this is the best way that I've seen so far of becoming an entrepreneur and building your own free lifestyle. It's amazing. You and you've done a great job. How can my audience get in touch with you? Yeah. So I actually re recently after Rhodium, I, I launched a personal blog. Um, it's very early stages, but I did, I did put up a keyword research primer, um, you know, simple, straightforward. If any of your audience is interested, um, you can check it out at authority Sherpa.com. And um, I'll be you know, up, updating that and that'll be my, my project going forward. We'll be putting out more content um, really about you know, getting people to become better digital entrepreneurs, particularly in the content space. So if that's something you're interested in, you know, if, if you think the affiliate model is interesting, you can definitely reach out to me there. Uh, you can, you know, anyone can connect with me on Facebook. Uh, I'm an open book, you know, you know as anyone who's... Um, talked with me in the last week they know that I'm, I'm available um you know and i can i'll help anyone out um i love talking to other entrepreneurs and and figuring out you know how to help them and um you know what their business models are and get their priorities straight and you know i don't know everything i, I know i have a, a, a small core competency but i think it's a it's a, a foundational uh skill set that can help uh any business model that's online and, and what was the name of that site again authority sherpa.com and this is basically you're creating a content site to give information to people who are looking to learn how to create content sites. Yes, that's correct. I never thought I'd be doing that, but <laughs> but uh, but here I am. Well, thank you for the education, you, and thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Uh, I really applaud you and the hard work you've done. I know it's been an amazing year for you. I hope you have record-breaking. Uh, holiday seasons. I know this is the most exciting time of the year for you and e-commerce people and affiliate people in general. I really appreciate you coming on the show, you and it's, it's really been a pleasure. Thanks, Ashley. I, it's it's been it's been amazing. I really appreciate you. It's my first podcast, and so I really appreciate you uh, having me on. <laughs> All right, who is ready to start building their own dream rather than someone else's dream? If you want an example of the types of websites we're talking about, check out thewirecutter.com. It's basically a content site, just like what Ewan builds, and it links back to Amazon affiliates and different types of affiliates. It was just sold to the New York Times for over $30 million. Ewan's story could be your story. Escaping the cubicle, finding what you're passionate about, building up those skills and start creating your own digital empire. And I really want to help you as much as I can. You know, this is one thing again from this Rhodium weekend conference that I really appreciated is speak from experience and always ask how you can help someone else before asking for help. In that light, I have created a social page for Liberty entrepreneurs on Facebook. I want it to be a hub where people can come to ask and answer questions, get feedback and help other people build and become more successful. And in turn, you will become more successful as well. It's a private invite only type of group. So check out the show notes. If you'd like to join a community like this, I highly encourage you to contact me. It's quite small right now because it's only a few weeks old, but let me know what you're passionate about. Let me know what you're building and what your projects are, and we'll see if you're a good fit to become a Liberty Entrepreneur. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay tuned next week for another episode. And until then, you know what to do. Keep building freedom.